And now we arrive at the final subject for this lecture, putting all of this crap together. How do we deduce a compound structure from spectral data? Here are my steps. Now I'm telling you, you don't have to do them in this order, but for me personally, I found this order to be the most useful uh, way of being able to deduce a compound structure from spectrum. Step number one, look at your IR for an OH and or a carbonyl. Step two, if you have a carbonyl as determined from the IR, then look at the C13 NMR to figure out where it shows up. If it shows up at 160 to 180 ppm, then your compound is an ester, amide, or carboxylic acid. If it shows up at 200 or above, then it's a ketone or an aldehyde. Now if you don't have a carbonyl, so if you look at your IR and don't see a carbonyl anywhere, then you can pretty much ignore your carbon NMR because it's not going to tell you anything useful, generally speaking, that you can't already figure out from the hydrogen NMR. Step three, look at your hydrogen NMR for the following. First, look at your hydrogen NMR's integral height. Measure each of the sigmoidal curves above the peaks and determine their ratio. One to two to two, or two to three to three, or four to two to two, or four to two to three, or whatever that happens to be. Rem remember that those heights tell you proportionally how many hydrogens are in that peak. The next step is remember peak location. Based on where those signals appear, you can determine what kinds of hydrogens they are. Once again, if they're 1 to 5, single bond land. 4 to 6, double bond land. 6 to 8, aromatic land. 10, phenols or aldehydes. 12 to 15, carboxylic acids or amides. And anywhere kind of in this region would be the default for alcohols and amines. Step four, put the pieces together that you've figured out from steps one through three. Now there may be multiple ways of putting them together. If so, then you use the splitting information to help figure out which way is correct. If there aren't multiple ways of putting those pieces together, then you really don't have to care about splitting, frankly. When you're all done, your proposed answer's mass should equal the one deduced from mass spectrometry data. Now I should tell you this step is the one that I personally like to call playing with Legos. You'll see why. So let's do some examples. Let's say that I've got a compound who gives the following IR, C13 and HNMR data. Now if I'm trying to deduce its structure, where do I begin? I of course begin with step one. Step one from Mike's list of steps is look at the IR and try to figure out does this compound have a carbonyl or an OH. Does it have a carbonyl? I see a huge peak at 1700. Heck yeah it does. Does it have an OH? No it does not. I know there's this little blip here but that is way too tiny to be an OH for this type of compound. This is likely caused by small contaminant either an amine or water that was in the sample when it was run by IR. Next step, I look at the carbon NMR. Because I have a carbonyl, I look at the carbon NMR to figure out where that carbonyl carbon shows up. Now you'll notice that this says offset 40 ppm right here. That means that this signal right here, which is the carbonyl carbon signal, is appearing 40 ppm to the left of about 160. So it's showing up above 200. So because this carbonyl carbon is showing up above 200, it has to belong to either an aldehyde or a ketone. This is the only thing that I do with my carbon NMR. And one thing I should point out is this. Carbonyl carbons will always be the carbons that appear furthest to the left on your carbon NMR. So don't start looking at signals anywhere in, in this region over here. Waste of time. The next thing that I do is I look at my hydrogen NMR and I do the integration. If I measure the height of this integral curve beginning at the ho horizontal line to horizontal line. So I start measuring it from where it goes horizontal to vertical and where it stops going vertical to horizontal. This height right here is the smallest of all of these integrals. I'm going to call it 1. Now if I measure this with my ruler, I can, I've discovered that the height from here to here is around 5, proportionally speaking, with comparison to this integral over here. I've also discovered that the height over this peak from this horizontal to this horizontal is 2. 
and from this horizontal to this horizontal for this peak is also 2. So I've now done my integration. The next thing that I do with my hydrogen and MR is determine based on where these appear what they are. I've got a peak that's right close to 10 and it integrates for 1. What is that? It's of course an aldehyde. That's consistent with what I discovered in my carbon NMR. My carbonyl compound has to be either an aldehyde or a ketone. Now what about these signals? They appear between 6 and 8 ppm. What land is that? It's aromatic land. Now for these examples and the vast, vast majority of examples you'll ever encounter on a standardized exam, the NMR spectra that you'll get for an aromatic compound will only be for a substituted benzene. That's it. So don't worry about other aromatics like pyridine or, or imidazole or some other crazy aromatic. We'll just stick to benzene. So how in the world can I get a benzene ring that only has five hydrogens on it? Well, of course, it has to be a benzene ring that is monosubstituted. This is not a T-butyl group, by the way. This is just representing some substituent, I don't know what it is yet, dangling off of my benzene ring. I've got one, two, three, four, five hydrogens left, and they're all heaping up on top of each other in aromatic land. Now, what about these? These signals down here appear all below 5 ppm. What land is that? It's single bond land. So if I have something that integrates for 2 and it's in single bond land, what could it be? It's a CH2. That's it. Here I've got another signal that integrates for 2, single bond land. What is it? It's a CH2. So what I've done right now is I figured out my pieces. I've got a benzene ring that has something hanging off of it. I've got a CH2, another kind of CH2, and an aldehyde. How in the world can I put those together? In other words, I'm at step four. How in the world can I play Legos and put my pieces together? Well, first of all, I take my benzene ring, and if I look at the pieces I've got left, a CH2, another CH2, and an aldehyde, there's only one uh, way I can consider putting those together. I have to have my one CH2, then my other CH2, then my aldehyde. Now that I've got my guess, I step back and look and ask myself, is this guess consistent with all the data that I have? My molecule has a carbonyl. Is there a carbonyl in the IR? Yes, there is. My molecule uh, is an aldehyde. The carbonyl signal in the C13 NMR shows up above 200, which is consistent for an aldehyde carbon. Next thing, I look at my hydrogen NMR. This H right here should show up around 10, does it? Yes, it does. It's right here. This benzene ring is five hydrogens in height, then it should show up somewhere in aromatic land between 6 and 8 ppm. It does right here. I've got a CH2 and another CH2, both of which show up somewhere in single bond land. Here they are. Is this compound consistent with all of my data? Yes, it is. So is it right? Oh, yeah.